And welcome to episode number six in our series called Remembering Coach Smolinski. It's just been such a wild ride as we've relived so many of these great memories and we've just been so appreciative of all the former players that have been able to jump on with us and relive these memories. One thing that's been undeniable through this series is the uh, incredible amount of amazing young men that went through the program through the 70s, the 80s, and, and you know through the 90s and beyond, of course. And also what's been undeniable is the success that they've gone on to have after their playing days and after they graduated from Hamburg. And certainly today's guest is no exception. We welcome in 1979 co-captain, Mr. Bill Lohman, but you probably know him as Willie. Willie had a tremendous career, played an instrumental role in that great 79 season. And he went on to have an incredible career. He is one of the top mortgage executives in the country. And what's really cool is he's quick to pay tribute and credit Coach Smolenski for some of those lessons that he learned as a high school baseball player and how those manifested themselves and eventually played a role in the success that he's achieved in his career. Bill tells so many priceless stories and he does so in such a warm, gentle and inviting way. It's gonna feel like you're sitting right there in the dugout or riding the bus home with that 1979 team and reliving that great season. And you won't wanna miss the very last story. Sadly, you probably heard we recently lost Coach Smo's brother, Danny, as well, that, that we all called Smoker. Uh, just another tremendous loss that, that's hit the community hard. And uh, Pill does a tremendous job of telling a classic vintage story about Smoker, who was a, a, a tremendous ball player, of course, and, and one of the very, very, very best umpires in Western New York. And we sure um, miss him dearly. So in our effort to pay tribute to not only Coach Smo, but also his brother Danny tonight, we welcome in 79 co-captain, Mr. Bill Bowman. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 1979 graduate and team co-captain, uh, a 2016 inductee into our Hamburg Alumni Foundation's Wall of Fame, and uh, a very well-established and successful uh, mortgage executive. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome in today Mr. Bill Lohman. Bill, uh, thanks so much for jumping on, man. I, this is so exciting to get connected here tonight. Yeah. Well, thank you, Derek. And um, it's really an honor to be here. And, and the first thing I want to do is thank you for doing this uh, for Coach Schmo. He was a great coach, great man, did so much for so many people. And for you to recognize that and then to bring in, you know, the old timers like me and some other folks and how you, you know, kind of honor the, the coaches and the players of the past. I think that's pretty special, Derek. So thank you for doing that. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, we are, and everybody that I've talked to, we are just eating up these great stories and uh, you know we can't get enough of them we can't get enough of them so we're, we're really excited um That's great one one itch that i've got to scratch before we get into coach smo is sure i gotta ask you what does it take to be named um one of the top 100 most influential executives uh in in the mortgage industry you didn't tell me you did homework on me. <laughs> Dang you, man. I didn't. <laughs> I got to do um, some homework, right? <laughs> you know what? It's um, uh, a, a good team. And, you know, you know, as a coach and, you know, and whether you're coaching or whether it, 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 it positions of leadership, um, you, you have to surround yourself with, you know, good teams, good coaches, good players. And I have been really fortunate um, to, to have been surrounded by a lot of great people that have helped me. You know that achievement. Oh, that's that's really cool. That's really cool. The um, and I guess and just one more thing before we we really get into sure. telling some great stories about Coach Smo. Um, help help uh, connect everybody with how you got to you know where you are out in California these days. Yeah. So um, I left um, I left Buffalo in March of 1993. But I, I will tell you, uh, Derek. In many ways, I still consider it home. You know, it's where I grew up. I still have family there. Um, but you know, you get to a point where, you know, you, you know, you realize maybe I need to make a move to, you know, achieve some of my career goals. So, mm. uh, my family and I, we migrated West. I spent a couple years in Louisville, Kentucky, and then found my way to California in, uh, 1995 and have been here ever since. And, uh, while I love California, you know, my, my, uh, shoot, my sports teams are in Buffalo. I got my... <laughs> water mug here and uh, go bills and you know I, I wore this to work today 
Um, <laughs> but I'll take it off for the interview. So, uh, you know, Buffalo is where my heart is. That is awesome. That's so cool. So we're, we're, wind, we're rewinding the clock. And, yep. um, and you were certainly got a front row seat to Coach Smo's, you know, early part of his coaching career. Yeah. You know, where I think he was, you know, certainly the most energized and, uh, you know, just really humming on all cylinders, so to speak. Yeah. Um, wh what do you remember about some of your first interactions with Coach as you were a young ball player coming up into the program? Yeah, so like, like you said, Derek, super high energy guy. And I think what I remember most um, is a couple of things. One, his laugh. He, he had a distinct laugh and two, his whistle. And he had this whistle. I can't whistle. I couldn't repeat that whistle. But whenever we did infield and outfield practice, the whole time he was doing this whistle. And it was, it, you know, it kind of would pump us up. It was high energy. He, you know, the pace of his practices reflected that. And, um, you know, I, I definitely remember that as well. I think, um, you know, I was a part of his, his first year as varsity coach. I think I was on JV and then I was on his second and third uh, teams. Wow. So that, that's a really quick turnaround. So I guess, so 1979, you guys make the playoffs for the first time in 20 years. And I guess I probably didn't realize just how early that was in coach's career. What, what do you think that were some of the contributing factors that helped mount that turnaround? Boy, um, you know, and I was thinking, I was thinking about that too, Derek, I'm 59 years old and I saw that uh, coach was 72. So, you know, if I was 16 or 17, then this is a 29 or 30 year old guy. Um, I knew he was young, but he didn't seem that young. So, you know, we, we had a, we had a good team. I want to shout out, you know, and I appreciate you bringing me on, at, you know, as being a co-captain of that team. We had another co-captain that year, first baseman, Ed Bates. I'm still in touch with Ed, really good ball player and was, you know, a big contributor on that team as well. But um, yeah, 20 year drought, um, you know, it's kind of like, do droughts follow me? My Bills had a long drought and they didn't break that. Now our Sabres are in the middle of a drought. And, you know, we, we had a 20 year drought that year. And um, a lot of things that I remember about that. Um, I believe we started the season 0-5 um, or 0-6. We, we had a really rough start um, to the season. Um, during that five or six game loss, uh, coach benched me. For a game um, we lost a road game <clears throat> on the bus ride home um, I was you know I think being a goof off uh, which you know maybe 16 and 17 year olds like that and uh, um, he didn't appreciate that um, he uh, he told me I needed to take losing more personally and uh, and it needed to hurt more when we lost and that's something I'll you know the carries with me today. Um, so he, he, he benched me. Um, I remember the game, um, I was kind of pouting and I went and sat at the other end and he's like, ah, oh, Willie, that's what we call it. then. Willie, come on down, sit with me. Let's talk about how we're going to coach this game. And so, you know, it was just the kind of guy that, um, said what he had to say, delivered the message he felt he needed to deliver, yeah. deliver the message that I, I needed to hear and, um, but didn't hold a grudge. And one of the things that I'll never um, forget about uh, Coach Schmo. And then um, we turned it around. And there's, there's a few things that I think were the keys to that, that, you know, at, that I remember very well. We had a guy on our team. His name was Joe Hale. And Joe, um, Joe could play any position on the field. Joe could play any sport, super guy, super athlete. And um, I think he got suspended for like the first three or four games of that season for a little, you know, minor mischief, nothing bad. Joe was a great kid, but he had to miss some games. And when we brought him back, um, Joe um, really helped solidify our defense and turn, turn the, uh, turn the uh, season around for us. Um, it was just, it was just a really interesting year. You know, I'll, I'll back up a second and just share with you another thing about coach Schmo and how he could deliver a tough message. And I guess I had a couple of tough messages that year. <laughs> um, my junior year, I was a starting shortstop yeah. and um, 
you know, played every game and, and did pretty well. And uh, going into the senior year where, you know, we were, you know, started out on six or whatever. And before the season started though, um, coach comes up to me and he says, uh, Willie, um, I know you want to play baseball in college. And I think your best chance is to um, play outfield. I'm going to move you to right field. Wow. And uh, you know what? A, it was, he helped, did, he did help prolong my career. I did go on and I, I played ball at Fredonia State University and I played outfield. But he made me feel good about myself because the truth was Tom Sardinia was a better shortstop than me and he needed to put Tom in the lineup. And so he moved me to right field. So that was just the kind of guy that, uh, you know, again, didn't hold grudges and made you feel good about a tough message. And so that was uh, something that I'll, that I'll never forget as well. Classic. Um, That's classic. So, you know, I moved from shortstop to the outfield and <clears throat> we weren't playing bad, but we weren't winning. And um, we got Joe back in the lineup and we started playing well and we started, you know, ripping off wins. But, you know, but as we were going through and winning games, we remained humble and hungry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the keys to this team was um, played great D. You know, I, I can hear coach whist, doing his whistle, saying, throw a lot of leather at him, throwing leather. Um, we got great pitching. And, um, man, we had high IQ players, I would say. You know, I, I, I just thought that the team we played – or the, the, the team that we had, um, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier. You mentioned about Rick Sambrato going on, who's second baseman on our team. Good guy, good ball player. Um, he went on to be a high school coach. Um, our co-captain that year, Ed Bates, good guy, good ball player, super heady ball player. He went on to be a high school baseball coach. Um, so, you know, it was, we had that kind of makeup um, on our team. And we got some great pitching, especially down the stretch. Uh, Bert, Tim Hopkins was his name. Okay. His name was Bert. And um, Bert was just a great pitcher, um, had a great year. And I don't know if we had pitch counts back then. I can't remember or how much rest you had to give a pitcher. But um, as I remember it anyway, we were running bird out there about every couple of days. And, you know, it's like, you can worry about your, your arm bird. later. And uh, it was, um, it was great. We made the playoffs and, you know, we, we started winning games. So that, wow. I, I tell you what, like, I, I'm listening to that as a young coach and, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to take notes here, mental notes about, you know, kind of like, and what I'm picturing is, you know, almost him, you know, being able to put his arm around you on the bench that day and kind of having that, that fatherly touch to it. And yep. uh, I think that's a pretty special talent to have as a coach. Absolutely. Um, so, so you guys are getting hot at just the right time, as we yeah. like to say. And you guys, after, you know, a couple of first round wins in the playoffs, you roll into the semis against yeah. a, a real powerhouse neighboring school there at Orchard Park and the, and the yes. legendary coach, Bob Barros. Yep. Um, tell us what you remember about that monster clash. of things. So you're absolutely right. I mean, Orchard Park, I think for the many years before that and many years after that, dominated the high school baseball scene. And, you know, we played them as freshmen and JV and as juniors in varsity. And I don't remember ever beating them. So we meet them in the playoffs and boy, there's a few things that I remember about this. Um, we played at Howfield and, oh, okay. and, you know, our, the home field in Hamburg. Um, they had two future NFL players in their lineup. Um, Ron Pitts, who, um, he was, um, you know, his, uh, he was the son of Elijah Pitts, who was a Bills coach and went on and played in the NFL, actually played a little bit with the Buffalo Bills. And I think is still on TV as a, a yeah. color commentator for one of the networks. He was on that team. And Ron Wolfley, who went on to have a great uh, pro football career as a special teams guy. And I think right, it, mainly with the Cardinals. And I think he's the uh, uh, color commentator for the radio uh, uh, broadcast team for the Cardinals. They were on that team. So, um, you know, they would have kicked our butt in football, but that day we beat them in baseball and uh, it was a huge win. Um, and, and that night, um, I don't know if they still do this, Derek, but we, we had um, the sports assembly mm -hmm. that was that night. 
Yeah. Um, and that was where you bring the parents in. All the different sports teams yes. from the spring would go in and we'd get our varsity letters. Parents would be there. Um, and um, I don't think anybody anticipated with the 20 year drought, you know, that we need to worry about the playoffs when scheduling a sports assembly. So the sports assembly had already started and we were coming off the field at Howe Field and we walked in to um, the auditorium. We were in our baseball uniforms. Uh, coach was in his sweats and we go in to this big crowded auditorium for the assembly. And it was like going into a pep rally. It was so cool. We were so pumped up. Uh, it was such a great, such a great uh, experience for all of us. I'll never forget that. That sounds like a script straight out of a Hollywood movie. Bill. You bet. I'm you getting bet. goosebumps listening to you tell that story. Yeah, that was that was incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so and then and then you guys had the the infamous sectional finals game with Lancaster. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and we didn't end up on, the, you know, the side that we were hoping to be on, but uh, certainly a memorable game nonetheless. Yeah, you know, it was, um, we lost an extra innings, and it was a really low scoring game. Um, the, uh, um, and we tied it, and I don't even remember the players involved. We tied it um, with a suicide squeeze. So, you know, that took some guts on coach in a situation like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Derek, if you're in the, if you got all the marbles on the line, you go in suicide squeeze or what do you do? That's, you know. Yeah. I've, um, I've been known to be a little crazy myself, but I well, love that. I love good it. Good for you. And, and coach was, and I don't remember if I thought it was crazy. I was just like, Oh my God. And we tied the game and I, and we lost it an inning or two later. And we, we faced a, a pitcher named um, Tony Nicometti. He's a really good pitcher. Um, and he, um, <clears throat> he beat us. He ended up going on to have a really good career at UB and was drafted by, um, the, the Montreal Expo. Jeez, and so yeah. it was uh, a tough loss, but, you know, we felt really proud for doing something that no baseball team in the history, history of Hamburg high, um, has done. I was kind of hoping I would come in here and, uh, be able to say, and then, and it hasn't been repeated, but I see you're winning sectional titles coach and all that. So congratulations to you. Well, we're, we're just, yeah, we're just standing on the shoulders of, you know, great guys like you and coach Smo. you know, you guys kind of, I, I really think, and that's what we've kind of discovered through this, you know, these last couple of weeks is that um, the culture and the enthusiasm around the sport of baseball that coach Smo helped build, you know, we're certainly reaping the benefits of that. Oh, you know? and, and you know what, Derek, he loved baseball. Mm. He loved baseball. He loved coaching. He loved being around the game. I mean, I, I would, you know, I, as I was playing in summer leagues and stuff after high school, he was umping. He was just always around the game and he yeah. loved it. There, it was so evident in everything that, you know, he did on that field. That's, man, <laughs> that's what made him so gosh darn special. That's for Yeah. Sure. Yep. Um, so it, you went on and you, you had a great experience at Fredonia. Uh, what, 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 I guess I want to ask you, what was that transition like? Um, you know, um, did, did it feel like you were playing like a totally new sport at that level or was it a fairly seamless transition? Um, you know what? I mean, it, it was, there was a, a bit of a transition time. Yeah. Uh, I would say before, you know, I, my, I, perform better as I got a little bit older and, and that, you know, you kind of go in um, as a skinny high schooler yeah, and you come yeah. out, you know, a lot more mature and, you know, so I, it, that did, that did take a transition. Um, I can tell you, I wouldn't have been a, a shortstop in, in high school. So getting that year, you know, jump start on, um, you know, I'm playing outfield um, yeah. was, was really beneficial. That's great. And I, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I've, it's so exciting to see the success that you've had here through your career. Have you, you know, as you've had a chance to reflect and, and maybe connect some of those dots, has, has there been any of Coach Schmo's teachings that have kind of uh, showed up uh, throughout your career and the success that you've had? Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, going back to, um, you know, I was a captain, I was in a leadership role, and I wasn't acting like a leader. Mm. And he called me out on it. And he benched me for it. And, um, 
you know, at the time, did I want to hear it or did I agree with it? No. Um, but, you know, the, you know, the, what you learn and what I, what he taught me at the time, you know, as a, as a 17 year old kid was, you know, it's not just about having the name or the title of captain or co-captain mm. or whatever your yeah. title is in your, in your job that, you know, you've got eyes on you. You're representing not just yourself, you're representing your team, you're representing your organization, um, and that you need to conduct yourself accordingly. And I, that has stuck with me um, throughout, throughout my career. And that is something that, um, <laughs> which kind of neat, you know, now as I'm, you know, 59 with, you know, hopefully winding it down here pretty soon, I get to pass that lesson along to young leaders at my company where I can take what I learned from Coach Schmo and pass it on. And I think so that's, cool. you know, probably the biggest tribute I can, I can make to Coach. Certainly. And, and, the, and the legacy lives on. The legacy yeah. lives on. That's cool. um, holy smokes, this is, uh, this is, what a special treat this has been, Bill. I, yeah, I, uh, for, for I, me. Yeah. I want to give you a chance to, we always say, a chance to empty your pockets, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, what other kind of crazy memories uh, stand yeah. out when you think back on those days? You know, I, I, I got one that I wouldn't mind sharing. And yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's about Coach Schmo's brother, uh, mm -hmm. um, Smoker, yeah. uh, you know, Danny Smolinski. And I know he recently tragically passed away. And... Um, Boy, what a blow! And I, boy, I got some, I got some memories of Smoker as well. I don't know if you got a chance to know Smoker at all, but yeah, uh, yeah, he was, he was like, like Coach. He's our, you know, he was around baseball. I got, I met him early on, you know, probably even before I started playing high school. He played um, in a summer league, um, Lakeview, in the Buffalo Evening News Suburban League okay. with my brother-in-law Hank Harris. And so I, you know, I, I think I'd met him and got to see him hit. And he's a big, burly guy, and he could hit the ball. And, um, and so then, um, when we were practicing, especially in the batting cages, um, Schmo, Coach Schmo would invite Smoker in to uh, BP. Okay. And you know, when you, I don't know if you've had hitters over the years, Derek, when, you know, they're, they're hitting the ball or they're in the cages and it just sounds different. Yeah. It's got that sound that is unlike any, anything else. And, um. So when Smoker would go into the batting cage, you could just hear it. I, I, could, I could have my eyes closed, hear that sound, and I could be able to say Smoker's in the batting cage. Wow. So I, I, I remember um, going up there, watching closely while he was hitting, and I was like, you know, Smoker, I want to use your bat. I, 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 gotta, I want that sound. I, I want to hit that. I want to use your <laughs> bat. And uh, he's hitting a rope. He's like, it's not the bat, Willie. I'm like, coach, just let me try the bat. It's not the bat, Willie. And so finally he comes out and um, he gives me, lets me use the bat. And um, so first of all, you know, I would have been, you know, 16 or 17 at the time, skinny guy with smoker's bat. And this thing was like, I'm like, oh, geez. So I, I'm choking up about three to four inches on it and um, following it off, following it off. And he's like, it's not the bat, Willie. It's not the bat. Never really squared one up. Um, and I swore, you know, if I used his bat, I would get that sound too, but, um, it, you know, I didn't. And so it was just, I, I remember that I thought about him and this, you know, and, and the whole, um, Smolinski family, uh, great yeah. baseball family. And, uh, that was sad too. So I, I, if I could empty my pockets on that one and, uh, you know, he was a great guy too. And a long time umpire, mm -hmm. umped a lot of games that I played in. And, uh, I just wanted to send out, um, a little shout out to him as well. That's uh, couldn't have couldn't have finished on a on a better note. Um, just a just an awesome guy. Country strong. That's a uh, yeah. That big bat. That is yep. Crazy. Well, Bill, I I uh, I, I, sh I truly uh, cherish our, our you know time of getting to to meet each other here, and and I hope uh, you know we'll be able to meet in person one of these. I things. I do too. I do too. I definitely will be going back. Um, and I appreciate what you've done in doing this and what you do. And, you know, and we chatted earlier, but man, what, a, what an opportunity you have coach to, to influence, yeah. you know, these young men that we you know when they get to be 59, they're going to be telling stories about you. So um, yeah. thanks for doing that. And uh, 
it's great to see what you're doing. Oh, it's a tremendous, tremendous reminder for sure. We take it for granted sometimes. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's outstanding. Well, buddy, best of luck there on the West Coast. Yeah. We'll, we'll get these Bills revved up and cheer them on to some big playoff wins. Go Bills! <laughs> Go Bills. Oh, man. All right. Well, you take care, buddy. Well, there it yeah, is. Yeah, you, you too, Derek. Great to meet you. Thanks for doing this. It was an honor to participate in this, uh, in this session. Oh, buddy. All right. Take care, man. We appreciate it. Take it, it. easy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.